Hello, everybody. Welcome to the um, somewhat late uh, Saturday live stream. So uh, welcome. We're going to talk about uh, some interesting things that are going on in the market, which I think uh, we all know about. But it looks like there's a little bit of a a pullback or a dump or whatever you want to call it. But uh, it is interesting right now because, you know, as we get into these these bull markets and it seems like there's there's so much natural exuberance which happens with the markets when we get into, enter into the bull stage, everybody's so enthusiastic and they think like, okay, this time is looking pretty good. And we have even talked about how like this time is a little bit different, but it's always the same thing repeating over and over again. There's always gonna be people who want to take profits. There's always going to be ups and downs. There's always gonna be pullbacks and dumps and there's always gonna be corrections. And es essentially at some point there's gonna be crashes. So just to uh, uh, be aware that that was what's going to happen. So today uh, had another, Quite a bit of a of a pullback dump, whatever you want to call it. So Bitcoin's at 66.2. And uh, it's interesting because like once we hit the Bitcoin all-time high, it seems like we cannot stay above it. In the last 24 hours, down 3%. Ethereum's down. Tether, <laughs> the stable coin is down. But I mean, Tether, whatever. BNB is up a, like pretty well, actually, 23% for the week. Solana's doing pretty good for the week, but not for the, I guess, if you want to be technical, not for the last hour. It's down 0.1%, boo-hoo. And everything else is kind of down. Avalanche is looking pretty good. Ton coin for the week, but a lot of red, a lot of red, a lot of red, and a little bit of rallying. But I've been watching this for the whole day. And it seems like this, everybody gets like a little bit excited. Like, ah, look, you know, Hedera is up 0.9% for the hour. But that, that doesn't last too long. And then people just start dumping. And then over the last 24 hours, that's why everything in red starts to go up and up and up. And uh, there's a lot of these different meme coins that are actually getting slaughtered. So just remember that's just how it is. But what I want to talk about today is because there's there's many a reasons why this could actually be happening. Some people will say, well, the options expiration just is coming up. And of course, there's going to be manipulation. And it's just a normal progress of what is actually happening. Also, there's a little bit of a slowdown of inflows for the ETFs. And of course, we can make the case for all these things, right? But as in the end of the day, really, what it really comes down to is number isn't going up and the math ain't mathing. And that's really what it comes down to. So there is one kind of concern I had. And we actually talked about this, coincidentally, almost a month ago. And we took a look at what the all-time high was the previous cycle to the next halving. And I gave three examples. We took a look at 2013 all-time high to the next halving which would have been 2016. Then we took a look at the all-time high in 2017, the all-time high, which is 2020. And then we took a look at the all-time high in 2021 to at that point where we were at in the cycle as far as to the all-time or to the uh, uh, next halving, which would be roughly April 20th, uh, 2024. And we took a look at it. And it was interesting because like on 2013, the high was $1,132. And to the halving of the next cycle, it dropped 42%. And of course, then that was the next cycle of uh, of July 2016, July 9th. And uh, of course, it went from $650 all the way up to almost $20,000, $19,700. The next cycle, we saw it go from uh, 2017 high, $19,700. And then to the next halving, it dropped 56%, which is quite a bit. And then what we do is we took a look at, we said, okay, well, how are we looking at this point? Again, this was a month ago. This is February 18th. And I said, you know, we are, and I, I talk, we talked about this. I said, we are way over, over schedule. We are way over schedule because we're only, we're only at a 23% drop. And then actually I updated it to March 2nd, we did another video and I said, hey, we're only 8% away. And of course, we all know what happened after that. Uh, March 5th or 6th or somewhere around there, we hit an all-time high, right? Which was very odd because that's never happened. So again, 43%, 56 23%. And that's interesting. I, I found it like, okay, we're way ahead. This might be a good time to, and we even talked about uh, doing lump sums and a dollar cost averaging, which was a little bit risky for me, I might admit, because I don't really talk about lump sum. But uh, it seemed like a right choice. And uh, I mean, so far it's working out. But, 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 there's something that's, that's odd right now. And like I said in the, in the intro, it's very, it's like we just can't seem to hold on to our all-time high. And of course, what I want to show you is that once we hit our all-time highs for the cycle, 
we don't go back until we have the monster drop, the monster dip, which would be usually a year afterwards. So again, in November 2020, we were rallying and everybody's excited. I remember this time it was so great because we had just gone through like COVID and uh, we had seen we had seen like a Bitcoin price of around three thousand dollars. We had seen Ethereum like a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars somewhere around there. We had seen ADA at three cents. Oh, it was a it was a it was one of those days where you just you were like, man, if I don't know if it's going to keep going down or not, but I'm going to keep buying because you know I have a hunch, and you know the hunch were, uh, usually worked out. Well, it worked out at that point. But once once we get to this all time high from the last cycle, and we crossed it, December. 16th because we had 19,400 December 15th and the 16th we rocketed past it 21,000 oh that was a great day I remember that and this was around the time I think when uh, Tesla came out and said they're going to start accepting Bitcoin for payment for their vehicles somewhere around there correct me in the comment section I I could be wrong but once we go above that all-time high from the last cycle we don't stop I mean we have little pullbacks here but a pullback that went to 38, the whoa, oh my God, 40,000 down to 30,000. Like, okay, that's a, that's a, that's sizable. You got me on that one, but we didn't go down to 19,700 and we would not go down to that. And we went all the way 2021, all the way through here. Even this nonsense when people were talking about extended cycles and super cycles and stuff that I could kind of see their rationale, but that didn't really work out. And it just, nothing happened. And then of course, here we go to November. And uh, we hit a high of 67,000, let's just say 67,700. Remember that number, 67,700. That's what we're gonna go with. And then of course we dropped off. And we came up here and we dropped off. And we dropped off some more. And we didn't go below the previous all time high from the last cycle until June of 2022, it was a long time. So we had our whole rally, we had a whole, what is this, a whole year. Actually a year and a year and a half. And we didn't we didn't touch it again. We were just off the race, it was great, everybody's happy. Now check this out. I think you know where I'm going with this. In the last week, well, I can't say that. We came up to $67,700. Was it March 5th? Yeah. Oh, no, I was wrong. $66,700, March 4th. So we passed our all-time high around March 4th. Everybody's happy, right? Grid times had by all. Everybody's ecstatic, great. And then what happens? Well, of course, people take profits. And we went down, that's one. And we're like, no big deal, you're gonna take profits, so let's just, it'll go back up again, and it did. And of course, we go over the all-time high again, and then what did it do? Dropped again, that's two. Went to 60,000, ah, no big deal. It'll, as uh, Jim Cramer says, uh, find its footing, and of course it did. And it almost hit it again, but it didn't come over here. Now we go above the all-time high, And we keep it, and we keep it. Now, go over here, drops again, come over here. And there's three. We go above it, <laughs> and there's, there's four. And then we're doing this again. And then of course today, where are we at? We're at 66,702, that's five. So we've lost the footing five times. Five times we've we've done that, and of course people will say like, ah, it's not a big deal, it's not a big. It's just that's just how it is. It is, but it's just kind of it's just an odd thing because we've never never been here. Now, does that mean that this is the end? And of course, crypto market is doomed to fail. No, it's not. It's just an interesting fact to take a look at <clears throat> about what's going on in the background. However, having said all that and taking a look at these nice things, it's not just Bitcoin. The alts are getting crushed. And I put this tweet out and I said, hey, good morning. 
the L2s are crushing it today. And of course, I was just kidding. But I said, hey, what happened to this uh, Deng Kuhn upgrade? I guess it's a sell the news event. And this was in the morning. I don't know how far down Polygon is right now, but you can see that if you just take a look at the L2s, well, let's just take a look at the L2s. Why don't we? Ah, come on, do my. Let's go to categories. Or twos. And if you don't know how to, if you ever go to CoinGecko, go to categories, you can uh, instantly sort this stuff. It's very handy dandy to have this stuff at your fingertips. So yeah, I mean, Polygon really wasn't affected by the Denkun upgrade. It's a, it is a side chain and it does have ZK rollups. So those, those dynamics of L2, but for ZK rollups, as I understand it, correct me in the comment section, it's the Denkun upgrade wouldn't really help that, but for L2, it's supposed to help them uh, in some way, shape or form. I'm not a developer. Anyhow, but in 24 hours, you can see that, hey, what happened to this upgrade? Well, down 6%, Optimism, 6.5%, Mantle, 6.4%, Arbitrum, one of my favorites, great team, good guys, 7%, 6%, Manta, I guess, 8 Metis, so on and so forth. So you, you, I mean, you get where I'm coming from, right? It's just interesting, like, uh, you know, these things happen. Now, could be a buy the rumor, sell the news type of thing, and that's fine. That's what it is. But that leads me to my next point, which is <clears throat> I'm going to steal Ben's information. <clears throat> There's a great part in his website talking about does it bleed? Because sometimes we we get too focused on what's happening in the day to day because it's fun. It's interesting to talk about. But I think it's important to really zoom out and just see where we're at in the grand scheme of things. So there's this point on his website. If you just check it out for under, under the uh, crypto section, just type in bleed does it bleed? And you can pick the standard of what you're comparing things to. I'm going to compare this to Bitcoin. So if you do Bitcoin to Ethereum <clears throat> over a max amount of time, it'll tell you over here, like if it's bleeding. Well, in the one day, yes. In the one week, yes, it's down 6%. One month, yes, negative one. In three months, no. It's actually, if you would have been buying for three months, you would have been up if you would have chosen Ethereum over Bitcoin. But you can see that for quite amount of, a good amount of time, even up to two years, you're actually not doing a great job picking Ethereum. I think we all know this, right? But if you had done three years, four years, five years, I mean, if you got in, if you got in eight years ago, you're up 78%. Congratulations. But yeah, that's that's Ethereum. And not that I'm not going to, I have Ethereum. I own Ethereum. I own Optimism. I own Arbitrum. I own all that stuff. All of it. I own way too much, actually. But let's take a look at some other stuff. I always like doing this. How about BNB? I don't, don't really care so much about this part here, but I'm, what, I'm, what I'd like to see is this beauty over here. The more green dots you have, the more that you were actually up if you just would have gone into BNB. Look at this. One week, you're up 23%. One month, 30%. Again, against Bitcoin. You can compare this against anything else you want to. Three months, six months, one year and two years. Yeah, you got me on that one. But three, four, five, and six, you're actually up 700%. But hey, if you were... Doing that good, dude, congratulations. Let's take Solana. I think you know where this is going. And yeah, you would have done pretty good. Actually, you're beating the pants off of Bitcoin. So congratulations for the Solana holders. I have some. How about XRP? Yeah, you know where this was going. So pretty much you're in the red, except for the, oh, you're up a 1% on the day. That's pretty good. That's what you call the standard, baby. And then one week, you're up 0.96%. But over three years, you're up 13%. Don't ever forget that. You diamond handers, good for you. Uh, but over the 10 year, you're down 60%. That's not so good. Let's see what else we got. Uh, Cardano, hey, another one of my one of my faves. Ah, this one didn't do so hot either. So you can see here Cardano against Bitcoin itself. The only way you're up is six months at 6.6%, .6%, but that's only if you did the six month thing. One day to three months, nope, one year. Four years, you're up 100%, but five and six, you're not doing so hot. So sorry about that. And let's finish this up with, uh, I guess, Dogecoin. That'd be interesting because it's a Dogecoin is a fork of well, Litecoin's a fork of, no, Dogecoin's a fork of Litecoin. 
Yes, which is a fork of Bitcoin. All right, got to confuse for a second. Actually, not too bad. And of course, one day and one week, one month, you're 41%. Six months, not so much. But three year, four year, five year, six years. I guess it just depends if you got in early enough. So yes, there are gains to be had. It just depends on what you want to get into. So to take uh, to extrapolate even further, because right now, if we take a look at the market itself, I mean, you might have noticed that, hey, Solana's doing pretty good, right? But don't chase pumps. Uh, it's up 31% for the week. BNB is up 23%. It kind of works like this. Usually in these markets, everybody gets excited about one project, right? And there's one laggard. There's one that just doesn't do anything. You're like, why doesn't this do anything? And then uh, just at some point, it starts to rip. That's what happened with Cardano the last time. But, uh, you know, it's anybody's guess, quite honestly. That's why I diversify. That's why I got everything else. But um, it was interesting, though, because I took a look at what's... Because everybody's talking about Solana meme coins and how well they're doing. Well, not so fast. Dog with hat. I can't believe I'm actually talking about this, but no, I'm just I'm just kidding. I, I have nothing against meme coins. I actually I used to own dog with hat. I still own Bonk and I still have some Myro. But look at look at how far we're down. Eh, 24 hours, we're down 23%. But for seven days, we're up 20. Eh, that's a bad. Bonk, we're down. Myro, we're down. Popcat, no idea what that is. But you're down 40% today. Uh Semoid coin? <laughs> oh my god. Ponk, not bonk. Harambi, it's a lot of red. It's a lot, a lot, a lot. Of, but there's one in here that I don't see. Actually, we'll get to this, which was Book of Meme. Now, this one, this one is up uh, 34,335%. <laughs> Crazy. We'll get to that in a second. But I just wanted to, to, to note that sometimes when you're taking a look at uh, some of these tokens and you're excited about it, it's not so much just to go into the L1, which is that's fine. You know, that's that's good. I can't give you financial advice, but sometimes you want to take a look at the ecosystem itself sometimes. And things are doing pretty well. Solana is still up 22 percent right for the week. But some of these, first of all, Chainlink's not on Solana. I don't know why it's in here. I mean, it uses its a companion to, to Solana. It is an Oracle. It pulls outside data. I get that. But to me, Chainlink's kind of like a layer zero. I don't, I mean, you can build on top of it. Render is an AI play, but it's still down 18%. God, imagine that. You're a Solana, you're in the Solana ecosystem, and you're also having the, the AI tag with you, and you're still down 18%. It's still a good project, but it's just how it is. Arweave, I own some Arweave on crypto.com and uh, damn, it's down 26%. That sucks. But look at this, Jupiter in this crappy day. That's up 9% almost, 67% for the week. Pith, which is essentially the Oracle on uh, Solana, up 42%. And then this crazy nonsense, book of meme. Helium's down. I own some helium. Radium, damn, that's crazy. Just some of those days. So... <laughs> If you're into one particular L1, maybe you'd like to go down that rabbit hole into the ecosystem. Again, if you go to CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko and just click on the ecosystems or categories, you can break this down through layer ones, layer twos, meme coins, Solana ecosystem, ERC-20 tokens, whatever you want to do, right? But there's a, a, a lesson, there's a story here, which is this one we talked about yesterday. And I want to remind everybody that uh, this is going to happen. It's not going to happen to everybody, but you're, you're going to feel this. I need you guys to understand what's going on. So we talked about this yesterday. This trader, apparently they bought the book of meme. Is that what it's called? The book of meme, the Bohm coin. And it talked about on March 14th, uh, on chain analytics firm Look On Chain flagged in the price of a trade. Solana holder invested 50 Solana into a new Solana meme coin dubbed Book of Meme. Trader bought around 170 million tokens and sold them for 131,000. Essentially, it was like I want to say $7,500, somewhere around there that he put into it. 50, yeah, somewhere around there, right? 7,500, somewhere around there. And he, like a day later, two days later, he sold it, or one day later, for 131000 That's great. Here's where it gets crazy. 
So the that was on the 14th, but the same, but the next day it climbed, it went from 0. 0.00005 to 0. 0.005. So it dropped a couple of zeros. And that 131,000 would be now worth uh, a million. That was the story yesterday. Now check this out. See this price right here, 0. 0.005. You know how much the book of meme now is worth? At its peak, it was worth two and a half cents. Let me show you it again. This is a half a penny. This is two and a half cents. So essentially that million dollars, what is that, three, four million, somewhere around there? Imagine that, you put in 700 bucks, if you just would have wrote all the way to the top, you would have got it. But here's the thing, and why I would like to press this with everybody. That's gonna happen to you. I'm not saying you're gonna get to four million or whatever it is, it's, maybe you will. But what'll happen is that you will have a trade and like we always talk about, you will take profits, hopefully, and you will take profits too early. You won't hit the top, and then you'll unfortunately keep watching this scenario play out and keep climbing and climbing and climbing. Before you know it, you're like, I'm such an idiot. I only made X, 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 X amount, and I could have made X, 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 X amount. So in these situations, first, the first thing I can say is don't watch don't watch it if you sold everything because if you watch the the ticker and you watch everything go up you're just going to get more depressed and the second thing i will like to remind everybody is uh i'm never me personally i'm never selling all my crypto i don't see a point for that i will never be out of of investing into assets i will never stop investing into land and real estate and precious metals gold and silver and getting into other businesses and also with crypto and digital assets and maybe a little play around with equities here and there. I will never get out of that, ever. So why would I sell all of my crypto all at once? Because no one knows what's gonna happen. I think if that person, and who knows if he did this or not, if they would have said, okay, I'm gonna sell, I just made $100,000 in 24 hours, not bad. I'm gonna sell 80%, right? And then I'm gonna hold on 20% because who knows, because that's my moon bag. Some will call it a hodl bag, some will call it a moon bag. For me, it's the same thing. I will be selling my crypto, Bitcoin included, and my alts, definitely. And I'll just have my moon bag. And if it uh, goes crazy and parabolic, I'm like, woo, did it pretty good. Now I'll never, I still won't hit the top unless I get super lucky. I almost did that with Cardano, almost. But I failed and uh, that's just how it is. So just something to think about, just thought I'd uh, throw that in there, but that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, everything we talk about is time sensitive.